was born in Portugal and uh, studied medicine in Portugal. I came here about three and a half years ago. Really like autoimmunity. I find it fascinating that at some point the immune system sort of reacts to oneself. As a medic, you're taught to believe in what you read and you're taught to be confident about your answers and that's what you want to portray. You want to portray a certain certainty. Uh, as a researcher, you're taught to <laughs> doubt everything you read, <laughs> put uh, <laughs> more and more hypotheses and uh, try to de deconstruct uh, dogmas. Good afternoon. Thank you for waiting for lunch and listening to me. Uh, I promise I'll be brief. I'll talk to you about um, a very, very long story, and uh, I think it will show you how, how much time everything takes to, to go on in research. I'll talk to you about a study that's ongoing now, after more or less six years, that was when uh, uh, Prof. Giovannoni first had the idea based on research that had been much longer, uh, going on for much longer. And um, what the study is about is whether we can uh, get rid of the antibodies that block the effect of the interferons. So interferons at the moment is one of the drugs that are licensed for people with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. People do develop antibodies against this drug. We believe that this, these antibodies make the drug stop working and we'll try to make those antibodies disappear and on the process we'll try to learn if they do disappear, why they disappear and we'll try to understand how this mechanism of antibodies and uh, works. So interferons are naturally occurring molecules. It's, it's a, a, a molecule that uh, occurs in the body, usually in response to viral infections, but also in response to other, thort, other sort of aggressions. And not only interferon betas, but other types of interferons, like interferon alphas, that are used in other drug, as drugs in other diseases, interferon gamma, that's a part of the inflammatory response. And as a trial, some years ago, interferon beta was tested in people with relapsing remitting MS, and it was found to work, even though the knowledge of why it's working is still being built on. What we believe is that when the interferon binds to the receptor in the cells, the cells get activated and you have benefits to MS in different compartments and in different types of cells. But if the immune system develops antibodies against this external given molecule, interferon, it will stop acting. So there will not be the benefits of the drug. We call them neutralizing because there can be antibodies that are against this interferon and they don't have an effect of stopping the effect of the drug. The neutralizing means that they will stop the effect of the drug. And if you think about it, if interferon is a molecule that our body produces naturally, when we give it as a treatment and we're developing antibodies against it, we have, in fact, antibodies against the self molecule. So we'll be using this situation as a model for an autoimmune disease. It is like an autoimmune disease in the sense that the antibodies that are made to the drug would also possibly be reacting with the naturally occurring interferon in our body. 
the good thing about it is that except for the drug now not working, there are no other effects that we know of that we can perceive about these neutralizing antibodies. So it stops the, the, the interference from working, that it interferes as drugs, but it doesn't cause any other side effects, it doesn't cause any perceived uh, disability. So to put you in mind again, this is like an autoimmune disease, so we can also use it as a model of autoimmune disease and learn from it. And as I told you before, this idea came from a long-standing research area that uh, David Baker and his group were working on. And this is done with mice. Mice who are induced to have a disease like multiple sclerosis, and we call it EAE. And they will have this going up and down that are like the relapses of multiple sclerosis. And they've tested many, many times. And what they found was that if they would associate a drug that would sort of deplete their lymphocytes, so deplete the white blood cells, and then come on with the same antigen, with the same substance that they had induced the disease with, so in, in their case it had been with spinal cord that they had induced the EAE, these mice will not develop relapses anymore. So they had to have these two combinations. One, the lymphocyte depleting agent, and two, the same antigen that causes the EAE would have to be intravenously administrated, whereas for causing EAE, it was in administrated subcutaneous, very much like the interferons are. And what they found was that for this combination in particular, no mice would develop further uh, EAE relapses, and also that none of the, there would be no more relapses in this situation. Whereas the other ones, the other mice that had not had this procedure, they would continue to have relapses and they would continue to have progression of disease. So this is not a situation that cures MS, but it would stop them from having relapses. And going back to how long this time takes, so this study, the idea started six years ago and now it's ongoing, just in the beginning, but uh, David Baker and his team, it took them eight years to convince the, the, um, the scientific community that this data was valid, eight years to, to publish, and this is after several years of the experiments having been done, right? So many, many years for an idea of how things work to actually come through and uh, be funded and have results. And, well, not all ideas do come, do actually come true. So we thought, based on this protocol, based on this um, data, we could try to do the same for the people who had developed neutralizing antibodies to the interferons as drugs. And this would have two benefits. And these are the main questions that we have for this uh, trial, which is, one, can we get rid of those antibodies and restore the function of the interferons, and two, when we're doing this, can we understand what we're doing in terms of the immune system so that then we can reproduce this knowledge into other areas of, of research and into other areas of the autoimmunity? And if we do find out what the antigen is that the immune system is reacting against in multiple sclerosis, maybe then we could cure multiple sclerosis. So what we'll go through is who are the people that we would be testing. And those are people who have been on interference such as Rubif or Avonex for more than 12 months, who have had a relapse during these 12 months. So which means that for some reason, 
the, the interferon is not working or is working poorly. What we will then find out, or try to understand, is whether it is not working because there are these neutralizing antibodies that neutralize the effect of the interferon, or which happens in many other cases for some other reason. So we will be testing whether people who have had one relapse in the last year whilst they were on Rebif or in Avonex, whether they do have neutralizing antibodies. And then we would believe that this was the reason why they did have the activity of disease ongoing. If they don't have neutralizing antibodies, we cannot continue the study, right? Because our objective is to diminish these levels of neutralizing antibodies. If they do have neutralizing antibodies in two different occasions, then we would invite them to continue in the study and go on to what we call immune tolerance induction. So we would tolerize for these antibodies. We would tolerize your immune system to this interferon so that the interferon would not recognize it against as an aggressive substance. And we would do that, again, with the same protocol that was used in the animal experiments, which is a drug that would deplete the lymphocytes, and for that we would use mitoxantrone, and then with high dose intravenous um, interferons. And this is, again, so we would use the same drug that you use, but at a high dose, and via the, the veins, so we would inject it intravenously. And hopefully, the theory behind it is that by a mechanism called high dose tolerance, the immune system would react in a way that the cells that are responsible for creating these antibodies would stop producing them. How would that, this go about? So, again, people who are on Avonex or Rebif and who have had a relapse in the last year, they will first be consented for the trial, whether they want to participate or not. They will be tested for the neutralizing antibodies. They will be tested a second time if they were positive in the first, just to make sure that this is really a positive result. And if they would are positive in both situations and if they wish to continue the study, they would have one single dose of mitoxantrone. So you all probably are aware that mitoxantrone is used in certain situations in multiple sclerosis. This would be a single of dose, which would drastically diminish all the side effects uh, that mitoxantrone has. And we would use it to create a lymphocyte depletion. Once the lymphocytes go back again to replicate and to come, come back, and that would be around two weeks, then that was the, the point when we would do the injections of interferon in the vein. And that would be a much higher dose than what you usually inject subcutaneously. And after that, what we would go on to would be to follow up with, then you'd be able to go back to the interferon treatment. And for the rest of the year, we would test for if whether the titers of neutralizing antibodies have diminished or not, and we would test your immune system to understand what the mechanism was for this happening or not happening. What we would hope to happen is that the neutralizing antibodies would disappear, and we would have, again, the effect of the interferon that would be an activated cell, and the interferon as a drug would, would work again. So, Again, the, the, the objectives of our, of our trial would be to, one, restore the activity of the Rebif and the activity of the Avon Access drugs, and to understand the mechanisms by which this is happening so that we could then rep reproduce them in other sorts of autoimmune um, diseases and autoimmune situations. Thank you.